What's going on guys? Welcome to a mod spotlight on environmental tech. This is a Minecrafters production and I am Captain Jack. Now because this is a really straightforward mod, I'm not going to go into a lot of details on stuff, which is why I'm calling it a mod spotlight as opposed to a tutorial. Um, but what I do suspect is that a lot of people are here to find out the power requirements um, for the void miners and also the power generation for the solars and how to set them up. Make sure you check out the description for the mod version and the mod pack that I'm using for this mod spotlight. All right, so to get started with this mod, um, basically you're going to want to start building this lithorite crystals here. And this is how you make them. You get four per craft. Once you have a bunch of them, you can make uh, blocks using nine, nine crystals, and that goes for all the other types of crystals. Um, there are six different types. Um, the first one is the only one that actually has a crafting recipe, and the rest of them you get from void or miners. So tier one is um, lithorite, tier two is erodium, tier three is cryonite, tier four is platinum, tier five is ionite, and tier six is athium. Now, in order to get tier two, you have to build a tier one void or miner. And that will not only um, bring up lithrite crystals, but it will also bring up erodium crystals. Once you build your tier two miner, it's going to bring up the cryonite crystals. It's going to bring up a small amount of those, slightly larger amount of erodium crystals, and a slightly larger amount of lithrite crystals. So each tier produces the crystal uh, of the tiers that come before it. Um, and also the one you'll need for the next tier with the exception of Athium because there is no next tier. Um, there is no new crystal to pull up. So the Ionite will pull up um, Athium crystals and every single other crystal before it. And it will pull up way more Lithorite than it will actually pull up of the Athium. So it's, it's kind of balanced. All right, so before we move on, there's just a few different crafting components to some of these uh, multi-blocks, um, connectors, diodes, and interconnect. Uh, these things require black concrete, and black concrete in this pack that I'm using um, is made by throwing black concrete powder inside a, uh, a fluid transposer. So if I was to fill this up, it would turn black concrete powder into black concrete. And this may vary depending on your mod pack, so just go ahead and check out um, your NEI, JEI to find out what the crafting recipe is for the concrete. All right, now in this version of the mod, um, there are four different types of multi-blocks. There was actually um, a beacon-type block in previous versions that might be added, that might not be added. I'm not really sure what they're going to do with that. But for now, I'll show you what actually is in um, my version of the packs. We have a void ore miner, resource, botanical miner, and also a solar array controller. And you can see that um, the outline of each of the main blocks that form the uh, centerpiece of the multi-block correspond to the material type that you're using. So the ionite, that's a nice cyan color like this, um, is reflected in all of the edges of the, the main block here. Um, the void ore miner brings up ores, the resource miner brings up a whole bunch of different resources. We'll see that in a second. The botanical miner brings up a um, whole bunch of uh, organic materials, trees, um, saplings, stuff like that. Um, solar array controller produces power, and for each of these you're going to need um, different types of structure frames. The structure frames are progressively hard to craft, as which that would make perfect sense. Um, the first one requires interconnect, iron, and lithrite, and then as you go down the line, it's going to require the next tier of crystal plus a little bit more of an expensive material. So you can see we're getting up to diamond, now we're at emeralds, now we're at a nether star, and finally for the tier 6, it's going to require two nether stars and two athium crystals plus a tier 5, five structure frame to make those. So they do get really expensive. Finally, for each of the um, void miners, you are going to need some sort of lens. Now the default lens is a clear lens, but the lens can be dyed up to uh, turn into any of these colors, and each of the lenses um, has a different focus, which will bring up more. So if I put in a gold lens or a yellow lens um, inside a void or miner, I'm going to have a 7.15% chance that it brings up a piece of gold um, rather than 3.23 at the base there. Um, and this goes for other things too. So the resource miner, the yellow brings up more sand and so on and so forth. So uh, just go ahead and hover over um, your laser lens and uh, hit U and it will tell you um, what the preferred um, ore is or resource or whatever. Um, and those will be used in each of the void or multi-blocks. Now there's also laser cores and those will be needed and they'll be needed um, in different quantities depending on the different tier of your void miner. Now in order to actually figure out uh, what resources that you need to actually create the multi-blocks, um, the only way to do it right now is to craft this thing called the assembler. And this is like the main um, tool for this mod pack. So you're definitely going to need this no matter what. 
Um, you used to be able to use a digital guide, and that guide used to tell you all the resources required for all the of the different multi-box, and it was awesome, and I'm sure that that's going to be added back in at some point. Right now, it's a little bit of a pain, but you have to make this assembler. You have to left-click on uh, whatever multi-block um, base part that you've um, created, and it will tell you in the bottom left um, what you need to make it. So for the Tier 1 Void or Miner, you're going to need 24 structure blocks, 20 structure panels, and two laser cores, and any color lens. And once you have all that stuff, you can use the assembler to build it. All right, when you're ready to build your multi-block, get out all the materials that you need um, to build it and your assembler. Place your void um, miner wherever you can. Make sure there's enough room. Um, if there's not enough room for it to build itself, it just won't build. It won't replace anything. Um, and then you just want to right-click and hold down right-click, and it will build the structure for you. When the structure's finished, you'll see in the bottom left my the little uh, message says direction south. Next, you'll want to supply it with some power and also a way to extract the resources from it. Now, this should be working, but it's not because it needs a clear line of sight to bedrock. So wherever you build these things, just make sure you drill a hole down to bedrock and it will start working immediately and the color of the uh, laser will depend on whatever lens that you put in there. To swap these things out, you simply just break it, put a new one in there and uh, change the focus. No big deal. And as you can see, it's starting to pull up some ores here. So that's how you assemble these. The assembler can also be used to disassemble these. So if I just shift right click, it breaks the blocks very quickly. So if you don't have a fast enough tool um, to uh, do this in any other way, then the assembler will also disassemble multi-blocks and then you can use the structure panels to uh, make higher tiers of your void miners and so on and so forth. All right, so the tier one structure blocks, you need um, structure panels, structure blocks, laser cores and a clear laser lens, but the tier two requires um, a block called a null modifier. And that is um, an additional um, thing that you can add onto the multi-blocks that you can um, turn into any sort of modifier, um, one of three actually. Um, and that's going to require a special resource. So when I was playing this on um, a server, I found out that actually the only void or the highest tier void resource miner that I was required to have was the tier one because it brings up a resource called mica. Now you can get more if you're looking for more resources, obviously you can build whatever tier you want, um, but the only real requirement to make the modifiers um, for the blocks um, in this pack is the tier one void resource miner. The solar arrays require these things called solar cells and we'll get into those in a little bit, um, but you can see um, progressively as you get farther and farther on here, um, the resource requirements for these get very expensive and 92 um, structure block tier sixes requires a lot of nether stars to make. All right, so here I have a void ore resource and botanical miner right now, and I have different power cables hooked up to them just to show you that you can attach power to any side of these. Um, and you can also attach a chest to any side of these, or if you're using a mod like uh, Applied Energy 6.2, you can attach an interface and the interface will import directly into your system. So void ore miner tier one, um, you can see here, it's been running for a little while, not too long. This is the kind of, uh, ores it's going to bring up and you can see here that's bringing up a little bit of erodium and a little bit more litharite um, and these work extremely slowly so my recommendation to you would be to build more than one um, void or minor tier one possibly up to even three of them just so that you can get um, these erodium crystals much faster because this takes a long time to be able to build a tier two um, here's the resource miner we got some nether rack obsidian sand brownstone, marble, so on and so forth, terracotta, moss stone. That's the kind of stuff that the void resource miner brings up. And then the botanical miner, you can see, uh, brings up all this stuff here. I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, it's kind of weird, um, and it really clogs your AE2 system. Um, but if you have a ton of storage, it's not really going to be a problem. All right, so here's the modifiers I mentioned earlier, and it starts with the base null modifier, which is crafted just like this. You need to interconnect and some of this stuff here. Uh, but then to actually uh, make use of the modifiers, you have to upgrade into something else, which is going to be why um, you'll need that tier one void resource miner, um, because uh, you'll need some mica to make these other things. So these are the modifiers. Um, the piezo modifier um, will allow solar panels to create energy from rainfall. The accuracy modifier increases the accuracy of the different types of lenses. So we saw the gold lens earlier. earlier. Um, the more that you have on there, the more gold ore it's going to prefer and more it's going to bring up. Um, the speed modifier is very simple. It just increases the speed of any of the machines. And this, these are very simple to swap out. You can have any combination of either null modifiers, speed modifiers, or accuracy modifiers. You can't use the piezo modifiers on the void ore miners, and you can just freely switch them out to whatever you want, and uh, that's it.
The speed modifiers will actually increase the power requirements of the machine tremendously, while the um, accuracy modifiers will only increase the power requirements slightly of your multi-block. All right, so all the void miners are basically um, exactly the same, except for the, the base block that's used on top here. So this is the tier one, and then you have the tier two, the tier three, the tier four, the tier five, you have a second layer down there, and the tier six, finally, which is the biggest multi-block. Um, and uh, I have uh, laid out all the power requirements for these. Um, the tier one requires 660 RF per tick, tier two, 575, tier three, 750, tier four, 900, tier five, 986, and tier six, 762. Um, this is from testing that I did um, using these Draconic Evolution relays here. You'll see that the tier two is actually, has a smaller power requirement than the tier one, as well as the tier six has a smaller requirement. Um, or just, just above the requirements of a tier 3. I'm not sure if that's on purpose or not, but that's uh, the testing that I use to find this. Um, if you have a fully speed modified tier 2, um, you are going to need 3.61 um, KRF per tick, and then it increases exponentially from there, finally requiring 77,000 RF per tick, a little over that, to power a fully speed modified um, tier six or minor or resource minor or botanical minor. And this is where I got that calculation from there. As far as using accuracy modifiers, you can see that the power requirement is significantly less than using speed modifiers. So full accuracy in a tier two requires 721 RF per tick, while a full accuracy um, tier six requires 2,367 RF per tick. And you can use any combination of these. Um, just know that the speed modifiers will increase the power requirements much more than the um, accuracy modifiers and the null modifiers, um, full null modifier or minors are down here. These are the power requirements. I'll probably end up linking these in the description if you want to see them all broken down. All right, finally now we have the solar arrays, and this is the power gen aspect of this mod. The solar arrays are basically made the same way, and you can see that these are kind of upside down as compared to the ore miners, um, but they're made the same way. Just simply hold down, right click, um, and it will build the structure above the solar array controller, and this is what it looks like, and it's going to use any type of solar panel that you have in your inventory and fill it into this middle part here. All right, so there's six different types of solar panels that correspond with each of the crystals, and they get progressively harder and harder to make. Um, well, not so much harder, but just more resources. So the litharite is going to be used in the next pattern. The erodium is going to be used in the next pattern, and so on and so forth, until you finally get up to the athium solar panel. And this is how you make the solar array controller um, tier six, and the other ones are very similar um, in recipe. So this is the tier one. The tier one generates 549 RF per tick, the tier two here generates 4,075, the tier three generates 24,059, the tier four, left that there, generates 106,110, the tier five generates 475,772, that's ionite, and finally the tier six generates 1,771,965. You can see this is a very large multi-block, um, it is very expensive, um, but it is super awesome. Now you can see here on the bottom here that I have the piezo modifiers attached to it. So if I toggle rainfall, the total generation is going to go from 1,700,000 and whatever that was, 1,000 to 1,550,000. So um, I would highly recommend putting these on your solar panels as there is absolutely no downside to it. And it will still create um, almost, you know, its maximum power potential, 80, 90%. All right, one cool thing about these solar panels is that you can interchange all the different types of solar um, panels in with the different tiers. So I have Athium solar panels inside of Tier 1. So that makes this Tier 1 create 1152 RF per tick. And uh, you can use any combination of solar panels, and it will still generate um, power. So this is a full Tier 6, but it's only creating 670,000 as compared to one point. 7 million. Um, what I did was when I was playing on my server, I would take a tier one and I would actually just make nine erodiums and throw them in here. And then eventually when um, I had enough to make all the structure frames for the tier two, I would use a combination of the cryonites um, with my erodiums that I put in there and then just kind of slowly upgrade um, my solar panel. So that's something maybe I'd recommend um, that you could do if you want to maximize the power um, as your resources increase 
um, and just stay ahead of the game all the time. All right, I'm going to stand here while I finish out the video. That's really all there is to this mod. It's very simple. Just use your assembler to build the multi blocks. Smack that assembler with the right click to find out what your power requirement or what your block requirements are to make each and every one of them. I'm going to post a bunch of uh, information that will be helpful to you in the description below, um, including how much of each um, block type you need for each of the tiers of ore miner. So that should help you um, to uh, not have to take out your calculator so much. Definitely recommend. Um, tearing down your old void ore miners and using the structure blocks to make your new void ore miners. Um, that way you don't have to keep creating um, more and more and more structure blocks because eventually when you get to the tier six, you're going to have a whole crap ton left over and you're not going to know what to do with them. Um, so I hope this video has been helpful. Um, if you have any comments, drop them in the comment section below. This is an incomplete version of the mod. So there's things like lightning, lightning rods um, that are not included in this tutorial um, that are just broken right now. So I can't show you um, how they work. And there's also another resource block that's also um, not implemented yet, um, but this is a really awesome mod, really great way to generate power, really great way to um, pull up resources um, and ores, and I hope you guys like it as much as I do. So as always, guys, thanks for watching, and stay poised.